Hi there and welcome to AllieMonroe.com. Today we're here with a free tutorial on how to make a windsock within 3D Studio Max. Now why specific a windsock? Well the tutorial is not really aimed at how to create a windsock per se, uh, even though we are going to be creating one, but it's more or less aimed at how to simulate cloth within 3D Studio Max but not using any simulation software like Reactor or the cloth modifiers. We're actually going to go ahead and use just the strict noise bend modifiers along with some controllers and you'll see that you can actually have quite a bit of control over your simulations and uh, uh, this is not going to work for wearing shirts and stuff like that but when you have a quick shot such as maybe a plane taking off on a runway and you need to simulate a windsock you're not going to want to simulate it with cloth. You can go ahead and just use a modifier. So let's get started here. We're going to go ahead and create a cylinder all right, we'll rotate this onto its side. All right, and go into the modify parameters here, and we'll set its sides to eight. And I'll throw an edit poly modifier on top of this. It's just off screen for you. All right, so I'll go into the vertice modes and I'll try and build the silhouette here of the sock. Okay, so something like that. All right, I'm going to stretch this out. I'll center up its pivot. I'll right click on the move tool and right click on each of these sliders just to center it up, kind of clean the scene up a little bit. Okay, so we'll delete these caps off. And uh, if you don't like this bounding box around the object, I find it gets in the way sometimes. Uh, J is the hotkey to get rid of that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make a bit of a texture for this windsock to give it some realism so we can see how it's flowing. So in the material editor I'm going to go ahead and create a material standard. And for the diffuse color I'm going to go ahead and make a map gradient ramp and I'll plug that into the diffuse. Now the reason why I'm not putting uh, materials on the length of the or on the faces of this object is because when it starts to deform we're going to get a bit of a faceted look to it. So if we just use the ramp here we'll get a nice smooth interpolation around the whole model as it's stretching. Okay, so instead of going with uh, the standard red sock, we'll go with the alimonero.com orange. And we'll set our interpolation to solid. We'll grab the gray here, we'll make sure that's set to white. Okay, so we'll move this down, and we're going to want to end with white at the end. So I find it always best just to pull that in, set it to white. And then in between there, we can go ahead and put in the oranges. So orange, another one, the white, and looks like we might be able to fit one more orange right in there. We'll try and space these out. Now this is just, this is not really the point of the tutorial, it's just something to pretty this up. Okay, so we'll just turn that on in viewport. And we'll drag here and drag it onto our model. Okay, and you can see now it's running lengthwise on the model. We actually want it to run the other way. So we'll just change our W angle here. We'll set that to 90. Okay, now we'll throw some modifiers here on the object and get started with the simulation. So we'll throw on a mesh smooth. Actually, we'll throw on a, a shell modifier first. All right, we'll just adjust that accordingly. We'll throw on a mesh smooth. All right, we'll set our subdivisions to two, and we can always go in with the shell and play around with the thickness on that. All right, so the next modifier that we're going to want, and this is going to start covering the uh, simulation, is uh, we're going to want a noise modifier. All right, and I'm going to go to frame zero. I'm going to turn on auto key. I'm going to go into the gizmo, and I'm going to push it down here, and then at frame 100, I'll just throw it down to this side. Okay, so as I hit play, Okay, we can go in and we can play around with the scale of our modifier here, and we can see in real time the kind of results that we're going to get. So we'll increase our X phase, maybe a little bit of Y, maybe a little bit of Z, and at any point we can increase the scale to get it more of a slower effect. Okay, so what's happening here too is our gizmo is actually slowing in and slowing out of its keys. So we can just go pause that, and uh, down here under default in and out, we could have set this into uh, ease or stepped but uh, or we want the straight one but uh, we can go into the curve editor and fix that so we'll go into the curve editor here 
Okay, with the cylinder one selected, we'll scroll down here under the modified object, grab the noise, and we want the Z position of the gizmo. All right, we'll select both those keys and set this to ta set tangents to linear. Okay, so now we'll get a consistent look over this um, windsock as a as the uh, gizmo moves left to right. Okay, so next we go ahead and add in a edit poly modifier. And I'm actually going to put that be underneath the noise. Now the reason why I did that is if you watch this simulation, you see that the front's actually moving. Now a normal windsock would have strings, but let's just pretend that uh, the front of this windsock is actually attached to something. Well, we wouldn't want that to move. Well, how do we get it so that all the rest moves, but except those vertices up front? Well, if you select the vertices here from the side, and then hit play, you'll see that only this one is moving not the rest. So let's click here. Well, hit pause. Okay. So if we select all them, even still that's not going to be enough though because now we're getting like a bit of a a kink here at the front. So the best way to do this is actually use a soft selection. So if we hit soft selection, we select that last row here at the end. We can actually play around with the parameters here, like the fall off, the bubble, the pinch, until we get the overall look that we're going for. So here you see that you're getting more of a, a stiff looking one here. But we can increase the fall off, decrease the pinch. Actually increase the pinch, increase the fall off. Now you get more of a loose look to it. And then at any time you can go in and increase or decrease the scale and you'll get more of a, a looser effect or a windier day. Okay, so we can play around with one more modifier here. We'll grab a bend modifier. All right, we're gonna move the gizmo up to the front. We'll turn on limit effect and we'll turn on our angle. And we can actually just Increase, move that down. So it's only affecting from that point there. Okay, so we can take a look here. We'll set this to zero and we'll go into the graph editor, or curve editor, sorry, and we're going to go find the uh, gizmo for the bend. Or we're going to go find angle for bend. So scroll down here under modified object, under bend. We'll scroll down till we find angle. And in angle, we'll just right click on it and assign controller. And here we have a different kinds of controllers we can use. And the one that we're going to want is more like, like a, a random wind pattern. And the best one for that will be noise float. So we'll click on that. And here you can actually see almost like what the bend would look like. So as it gets to this point here, it's going to be bending up. And then we'll get like a deviation way down at the bottom. So you can just play around with the strength. And at any time too, you can hit real play and actually get to see what it looks like in real time. So we may want to decrease the frequency, but increase the strength. You can see that the manipulator is starting to move a lot over here. So we really increase that strength. We'll get to see a lot more, almost like gravity is affecting it a lot more. That's going to be a bit much. Okay, and right now we're getting a bit too much frequency, so we'll just incre decrease that way down. Increase the strength. A bit more, a little bit more frequency, and there you can see you can just play around with the settings until you get the look that you're looking for. Now, in a, a one second shot, this is all you're going to need. You're not going to need to create an entire simulation just to get that effect. So, if the camera is way back here, you just needed something subtle, there you go. Uh, there's a lot of uh, modifiers within 3D Studio Max that you can play around with. Uh, usually just in the drop down, not even in the angle, just playing around with the gizmos can really give you some interesting results. So I do recommend you giving that a look. Okay, so you can see that uh, there's a, the use of these modifiers can really give you some interesting results. We just used uh, bend and noise, however there's different ones you could try out like twist, 
or FFD deformer, playing around with them, and all those points in the FFD deformer are actually animatable. But you can see here that we actually got something really close to a realistic result. Um, this would be suitable for a shot where the we just need some background elements, a little bit of uh, extra oomph to the scene to make it more alive, and uh, we didn't have to simulate this at all. And we still have a lot of control over this object. So, okay, so that's it for this tutorial. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to email me at info at Take care, everyone.